Hey, today we're going to take a look at Google Earth Pro. I was wrong, they still make it. It's just called Google Earth Pro. It's free. I assume the Pro was a paid version because I believe in the past it, it used to be for commercial use. It's not. It's the same version I showed before. You go under Help and About. This is 7.3.1 and it was build date February 6, 2018, so pretty new. So what we want to do is right click on My Places, add a folder. And this is just a demo, but maybe I'm just doing a day loop. So we'll just call it day loop. And I have a few other projects I'm working on, but it's checked after you make it. And then you go and you can bring in your file. You can go file open and do it this way and of course I need to bring in a GPX file and this is kind of the harder way to do it. I have to find it in this silly list here and I'm probably overlooking it or you can do it a much easier way <laughs> than that you can just actually go and you can grab it if you have it and it will copy it go ahead make sure those are all checked good enough it's going to take you to where it's located and here it is so then you can expand it this is everything that is under it you can see what things are I don't know why there's two tracks. That's pretty interesting that there's two sets. So let's see if I blow that away. Okay. I will just say delete and say okay. And then the points will be all those guys. You can blow those away. Delete. This is for importing a GPX file. And I can take that path and I can put it under my day loop. I don't need all this other stuff. Delete. Okay. So this is where we're at. We got our path. But let's say I live, I'll just pick a place. Let's say I live up here in the Woodmore area. I don't, but let's just say I do. But I don't want to hand draw that whole route to get to the trailhead. So I'll go down here and put a pin just by clicking up there. Got a pin, move it to where you want to move it and say OK. Then go up here. Let's say I live, oh, I don't know. Let's just pick here. I live in that house. That looks like a nice house. Click the pin, add a pin. Let's say that's my driveway. And it doesn't matter, you can put a name, but I'm mainly using this to go from place to place. So you have your two pins. I got one there, one there. And I downloaded the track off trailtaker.com. I and if you want to make it simple, you can put them in order. right click on the first pin say directions from here then right click on the second one directions to here it's pretty awesome look at that it it actually builds your route now how do I save this you go down here and there's this little folder with an arrow pointing down it's gonna put all the information down here so I go ahead and do it. It's going to show a lot of times two th or three different routes. It just saved all that information down here. You can X out now. You go back to here, and here it is right here. The, w the Woodmore Drive. I'm not going to need that. I don't need that. Now you can look at which route do you want. 
you know, maybe that's a better route to take than that route, which I would say, yes, it is. Unless you know the area, you can say, delete. We'll get rid of that one. Don't need that one. So what is this one? Mm, I don't see any difference, so I will delete that one. I will also delete the no name. Say OK. Right click, delete, OK. Expand this. Now here's all your wording. I don't care about that because I'm going to be following it on GPS. So I go to my route. I'm going to bring that up to under your correct folder, which is my day loop. I will unselect that. And that just gets rid of all that information and I will say delete because I don't need it don't want it um, you may or may not you know want your start location if you wanted to put a name there so I'll delete that one because I don't care say delete say okay rename we'll call it home so, I like to put my, keep the stuff in order. So I got my route for my house. Then I got the downloaded GPX file from trailtaker.com, which is Mount Hermon Road. And then that's how you do it. So you could add wherever you want. If, if it's actually county roads you're going to be on and not trails, like I could have done that for... Mount Hermon Road and not actually used the GPX file we already had but we're assuming that's a because it's in the Forest Service that's a trail and uh, you know maybe I want to now continue my loop maybe it's big bike friendly I go here go ahead put another one a waypoint these are waypoints what do they call them in this program Play smart. But if you use other programs, that would be a waypoint. But they're calling it a play smart. So that's what we'll call it. So, you know, now maybe I want to go up here to. I would think it's on here, but it might not be. Hotel Gulch. Maybe I want to go over here. So I'll go ahead. Put a place mark there. Say OK. Now I'm going to go to Hotel Gulch. I'm going to say right to the old hotel, which is there. And I say OK. Now the reason why I did three, because I'm not quite sure if it's going to, you know, if I just did two, if it would route that way. Make sure I have these in order. So directions from here to here. That's going to take me up the road. And I will say copy all that down to here. Close that window. Rampart range, so it names it pretty good. Delete, because I already know, don't need those. Go down to here. It's just a straight shot, so it's not too complicated. Go to day loop, put that in day loop. And I can just blow this away. And then I want to go directions from here to the hotel to here and so assuming I couldn't find any of these on trailtaker.com although we do have them this is just an easy way and a quick way to add in roads that aren't on here so maybe I'm connecting to a trail and then to a road I can add that road in to actually make a complete loop and I copy all that down, do the same thing. And really, once you get used to doing this, 
I'm cautious by deleting stuff one by one, but now I'm getting more used to it. So you can, you know, kind of skip some of the steps and then just take the path over and then I can right click and delete all this stuff. Don't need it. And there we go. And then if I didn't really need all these, I can just go through and delete them. Maybe I would keep that one and say rename old hotel. Oh. Not sure why I didn't update. <laughs> Not sure what that was about, but there we go. And then that's how you can use Google Earth Pro to quickly add in some sections. Now later on we'll discuss how to make this one complete. You'll actually have to use another program because you can't merge that with this in Google Earth Pro. But if your GPS runs a KMZ file like a Montana 650 from Garmin does then you could just color this all the same and it it wouldn't really matter if you're just following a track but if you're trying to have clean routes and not have you know all these individual you might want to merge them for that I still use Topo Fusion which does support loading KMZ KML files and a bunch of others so you can load these in that and then you can e even save them as a K KML file and re-import them into here and have all the data. But we'll look at that another time. Hopefully this helped you out with how to use Google Earth Pro a little bit more. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and check out trailtaker.com for all your trail needs. Have a good one. Bye.